Yes, Steve. Jane, is this a, we hear from the, the proponents and the people marketing this that they love it because there are beautiful higher standards. Is this all just about standards? No. Glad you asked that, Steve. No, it's not about standards. It's, if, if I would have a similar reaction to this if the standards were very good. The problem is that it's part of the system. It's part of changing everything. It's part of changing who can, what the system looks like, what the education system looks like, and who controls it. it they, don't, they don't want you controlling it. They want people, their people controlling it. And this is the way that you get the, the radical changes. And they use the word radical. Um, when they're talking about it. We've got to do radical things with education. And one thing that we kept hearing um, this afternoon from the proponents was, well, we're having problems with education in North Dakota, and so we have to do Common Core. And I thought, what's the connection there? Why does Common Core, why is that going to fix whatever problems there are in North Dakota? There are a lot of other things you could do. If you wanted better standards, which I would suggest that you go for because you've got all these other states locked into mediocrity. So if y'all got out of it, then you could have better standards and you would outcompete everybody in the country. You know, it's a win-win. So, uh, yes. What if, uh, you know, this looks like there's going to be a lot of control by teachers. What if we just let them teach? Oh, you can't do that. That's so 20th century, uh, Steve. Sorry, uh, 21st century, they have to do what they're told. Yes. Uh, yes. That is, that's also, but now I, I can't speak to North Dakota specifically on that. It is certainly part of the No Child Left Behind waiver because they, they talk about how you've got to show that you've got effective teachers and the way they define effective is that, you know, a teacher who does exactly what they want and you're going to have to collect the, the data on all of their, what they're doing as well. I'm not as, as versed on that as I am on the student database, but yes, that is definitely part of it. Yes, sir. Well, um, Common Core specifically, no. They're not going to talk about UNESCO when they're talking about Common Core. Um, <clears throat> it is certainly true that this is happening not just here, but it is happening globally, um, especially in Europe. And UNESCO is certainly involved in all of that. Um, <clears throat> what I will tell you is that um, even if, because some people just really get off on the UN thing, and I understand that, but what I will say is if, if there were a happy event that the UN fell into the East River and disappeared, we would still have this problem because the people here who are doing this are true believers and they will do it regardless of what it's connected There's to. There's just this agenda for globalization for so many different Oh, yes, yeah. Education is the same. It's and exactly the same. Is all yeah. Be yes. And that's how I would. Yeah, well, Arnie Duncan has, there's a speech that he made to UNESCO that's interesting, and I haven't labeled it here, but I would have to find the link to that. And, and again, they come with Darwinism, <clears throat> which is something that for us to really be alert to when it comes to our science. Oh, definitely, so yeah. be careful and watch for that. Yeah, Very cool. that's, that's, that's absolutely true. Yes, ma'am. That's evolution. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm wondering if you know of the private, big private schools in the country, especially where, like, President Obama takes his kids. Huh. Well, imagine um, what I'm going to tell you here. Uh, we have amused ourselves by calling some of these schools um, in the, you know, the really elite schools in New England and, you know, Phillips Exeter and all those places and um, Sidwell Friends in Washington. And um, none of those schools are doing Common Core. Can you imagine? Now, how's that going to work? Well, those kids will go to the Ivy League colleges. And what we're going to end up with, and Dr. Milgram talks about this, even though he's much less of a you know, nut than I am, I guess. 
Um, we're going to end up with a stratified, with a greatly stratified society. You're going to have the kids who didn't do Common Core and went to the, and they were ready for these colleges and they went there. And then you're going to have everybody else. And we're the everybody else. How are they getting around the ACT, SAT conundrum that, seem, that our private schools seem to be clearing? That's, that is a very interesting question. And um, for one thing, the kids who come out of those schools, you know, the, the admissions counselors at these um, colleges, at the Ivy League colleges, all went to those schools too. So they know that if a kid comes out of, of that school and had good grades at that school, that he can do it. So I, I don't think they're going to have a problem with that, regardless of what their SAT score is. We also heard, and I don't want to say this for publication because I don't know, um, <clears throat> one of the people that we work with told us that he had been told that the SAT was still going to have its old test, and that if you knew to ask for the old test, you could get the old test. Whether that's true or not, that may be a complete false rumor. I don't know. But um, they, will, they will end up in the good schools because they'll be the only ones who are really prepared for them. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am, in the yellow. I just wanted to ask you, are you familiar with Charlotte Paperback? Yes. I, I have not. I mean, she's sort of out there on her circuit, and we're kind of on our circuit, so we haven't really crossed paths very much. But I'm familiar with She says some very interesting things, but I, I have not really had much interaction or any interaction with her. So, uh, yes, ma'am. As, as they say, help is on the way. Senator, do you want to speak to that, or do you? I, mean, I know, you know, most of the conversation about Common Core has come up since the last session. Mm -hmm. It's just the only reason that everybody's there. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's going to be conversation. Mm -hmm. We'll find the deadline in January, so it's... Well, I know there's a deadline set for January. Yeah. There, Steve, you want to? Uh, that we have been told that, yes, there will definitely be a bill. And, and to make sure that, we have been told that, yes, there will definitely be a bill. So they're, they're aware of it. And there's some good people working on it. So, yeah. Okay, yes, ma'am. Um, that interestingly, I said a lot has happened this week. A lot has happened this week. They have now released that test. They've released the sample test because we, two weeks ago, we had a nationwide conference call about this issue. There were 650 people on the call, which is sort of amazing. We were blown away by that. Uh, apparently, one of the people on that call was the aforementioned Trevor Packer. And um, it was after that that uh, David Coleman announced that they would release the test. So the first thing we did was to check and see if it was the same test that the teachers were, were getting because we don't trust anybody. We are such cynic, cynical people. We used to not be, but we are now. Um, and it is the same test, but it is, it's available online. You can go look at it if you want to. Yeah. And one thing that you'll notice about the test is they say, oh, we haven't deleted all of these people. We haven't, we haven't taken Ben Franklin out of it. We haven't taken any of these people. Well, um, because you can look at the test and look at all these people who are mentioned. They're mentioned, but they're not ever the right answer. You know, you can, you can answer the question without ever having heard of Benjamin Franklin. 
you could know the right answer. And so it's very misleading what they're doing. But they're talking, they're running scared. I mean, I will say that they are running scared. There are, are um, resolutions being considered by the Texas State Board of Education, by the Colorado State Board of Education, and we're working in at least five other states on that. And um, this is a kind of a bottom line proposition for them because they make a ton of money off of this. And if people stop taking these things, they lose a lot of money. And I don't think their board of directors is very happy yeah. that the previously non-political college board all of a sudden is in the midst of this whirlwind. So stay tuned. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, 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 very much. Three years ago, we thought, are we just, you know, are, are we accomplishing anything? We couldn't get parents to come. We got grandparents to come. Parents were busy. Parents were at the soccer game. You know, they didn't, they couldn't do it. Um, and then the grandparents, I think, just, just jabbered at them so much. You've got to listen to this, listen to this. Um, we started out, and this is, it's been much more active in the East Coast. I think they were the states that really implemented it first, and there's kind of a wave coming. So um, I was in Nevada a couple of months ago, and, and it's brand new there. I mean, they're, they're probably not as far along as y'all are. Um, and, but there are a lot of states out west that really haven't grappled with it yet. But yes, the momentum is huge. And, and I will tell you what um, happened in Indiana when the Republican leadership, because this is not a partisan issue, the Republicans are very, very bad on this issue, a lot of the, the establishment. And they certainly were in Indiana until their pollsters came to them and they said, you are losing your base. And they suddenly changed their minds. And it's um, the person who was nominated for the Republican, who won the Republican primary for the Georgia State School Superintendent is very anti-Common Core and he beat the establishment candidate over that. So. Uh, there's there's a lot of momentum in a lot of states. Yes. I, I have another question because um, I also do distract help with the, the town, and it seems like I'm hearing a lot more conservatives are liberals also going out and speaking out. Uh, there there are not as many that are speaking, but there are some. Um, you see that more in New York. The teachers unions are very powerful in New York, and. New Yorkers seem to be real willing to speak up. Have y'all noticed that? <laughs> and uh, less, less controllable by the, the, uh, some of their, their officials. Um, and there is a lot of, uh, certainly a lot of writing going on. I don't know how much speaking there is, but it, what they're concerned about is that this is the corporate takeover, that you've got all these companies that are going to make all this money on it, which is certainly true. Um, so they're coming at it from a different angle. But we are seeing that. So generally speaking, in a legislature, for example, you would see the Democrats in favor of it because the education establishment tells them it's fine. And, um, and then you've got the Republicans. You've got the real Republicans versus the establishment Republicans. And the establishment Republicans are saying, uh, well, but the chamber says that it's good. And then you have to persuade them that they need to be concerned more about the voters than they are about the chamber. But anyway, yes, sir. What made you get involved in this? That's a good question. <laughs> I mean, were you bored in your law practice? No, I didn't have a law practice. I had kids, and my second, the second one went off to, the last one went off to college. So I had more time. And so I contacted um, Robbie George, who is the founder of APP. He's a professor, Robert George is a professor at Princeton. And he's probably the premier conservative intellectual in the country. There is a conservative professor at Princeton. He's it. Um, and, uh, and he started all these other organizations. He's got APP. He's got National Organization for Marriage. He's got uh, Witherspoon. He's got all these places. And so I said, do you need anybody you know, to do some sort of part-time stuff? And so he sent uh, my email to Emmett McGordy, who runs the education part of APP. And that's how it happened. But we didn't start out doing Common Core. Um, we found out about it really through some Christian organizations, Christian school organizations who said, there's something out there on the radar that it, we're concerned about, and we started looking into it. And then we got a call from, um, and we had done, we'd written a couple of things, but we had no idea how big this was. And then we got a call from these two moms in Indiana whose children were in um, Catholic school. But the Catholic schools wanted to be accredited, so they adopted, they had to give the test. 
And so they adopted Common Core. And so they started seeing these bizarre things coming home with their kids. And, and so one of these moms is very politically savvy. The other one is now. She wasn't that time. But um, one of them used to work for a congressman. And so she called some people in Washington to say, well, who do I talk to? And nobody ever heard of it. And somebody at Heritage sent them to us. And she asked, and she said, could somebody come and speak? And so my boss, Emmett, went and spoke. And, and that's what started the whole thing. And then it's just been snowballing since then. Because I was talking to a reporter today, and she was saying, so why do you think this grassroots movement is going? And I said, well, people are learning more about it. And I said, we don't go out into the states and try to gin up opposition. We sit and answer our phone. And people call us and say, can you come and talk? And we, you know, we'll put together this, and we'll put together that. And, and you can talk to the representatives, and you can talk to whatever. And so we just try to, we, what we try to do is to give the the intellectual ammunition to people who don't have time to do it themselves, like y'all. Because, you know, if you go in to talk to your state rep or your state or the superintendent or whatever, and they'll sort of pat you on the head and say, oh, yes, don't worry. This is all fine. We're the experts. We've got it under control. And you want to be able to say, well, no, I'm not sure that's true because look at these reports here. This says this. This says this. And so we do the reports and we give you the reports. And so that's sort of the way it is. But it, um, yes. It stays on. Yes, ma'am. Um, what about cursive? They don't teach cursive right It's not in Common Core. Now, you can, you can add it, but the Common Core standards, you are required to adopt them 100%, but each state is allowed to add 15% in any subject area. So you, what that means is, say, if you, wanted to add, if you wanted to add cursive or you wanted to add a unit on North Dakota authors or you know, something like that, However, none of that will be tested on the, the Smarter Balance test. So how much time do you think teachers are going to spend on any of that stuff when their evaluations are tied to the test scores? And if you're adding cursive, you're taking away your 15%. Yeah, it takes away your 15%. It takes away from what else you could want. Yes, exactly. Yes. Calculus. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well. yeah. Uh, the other teacher, actually, it was a mother and daughter teacher. The mother teacher down at Fletcher, daughter is teaching at the new uh, school in uh, Lincoln. Um, uh, the mother said to the daughter, so I was not directly involved in the conversation, all these people are, are making all this think about Common Core, but I looked at an old textbook, and it was, it was doing the same stuff. So they just think it's something new when it's not. So what is that Well, some of the old textbooks, yeah, some of the old textbooks were doing the same stuff. And that's and it didn't work. And so now they're doing the same stuff again. That's the new math that started yes. in class after mine. Yes. And yes. Exactly. If, if you want to go back, I mean, we were talking last night with some people, and, and one of them who had been involved in local um, school board issues for a long time was on the local school board said, you ought to take the textbooks from back, you know, decades and decades ago and see how the students do. And take the tests from then and see how the students do. Um, yeah, it, it has been in textbooks before. That's why this is just recycled failure. It's, it's, it's nothing new. But it's not, it wasn't in good textbooks before. It was in the bad textbooks. Yes? Uh, actually, there's a quiz you can go take from an 1800s sixth grader. Yeah, I've seen that. Quiz. Yeah, <laughs> that's depressing. Yeah, yeah, and we have 
slipped so far. Yes, ma'am. Um, just in regards to the assessment test, there was about eight adults in our family that took the state assessment test, went on and went on to the Smart Balance website. Oh, uh -huh. And we took a practice fourth grade math test. Uh -huh. It was ridiculous. After 27 questions, and we quit. Well, we went to the whole 27 because we wanted to see what our grade would be at the end, but we weren't graded. Uh -huh. And then we just were plugging in answers because we couldn't figure anything out. Yeah. And um, so anyways, um, my brother um, also took the test and he said, after question nine, he said, I can see the dropout rate greatly, greatly increasing if this is what kids have to take. So we've been, our kids go to private school here and we've been told that we, you know, can opt out of the assessment test without any repercussion or anything. And I believe in just with, the, with public school kids too, you know, just don't have it. It's a good thing to opt your kids out I would opt my kids out of Smarter Balance. There's no question about it. I'm not a big believer in opting out of all tests because there are some tests that are actually very good and give you good information, and, you, and it's your state test. But this Common Core test, I would opt my kids out if I had any, any chance of doing so. And the Smarter Balance thing is, and one thing, you know, so, so you couldn't do that. So if your child had brought home this stuff and said, let's, you know, mom, help me with this, you would have said, sorry. So what does that teach your child? It teaches your child that mom's really not all that smart, that you really need to go to the expert, you need to go to the teacher for the answer because mom doesn't really know it. Don't listen to your parents. And, and I don't think that's an unintended consequence either. Yes, there's somebody, yes ma'am. I think that, um, I had a couple of things, but um, one really tried to look at the Native Americans and across the different states of, when we're looking at only 10 people being able to add 15%, mm -hmm. um, how do you see other states um, that is happening with their culture. Because they don't, I mean, it's gotta be doing something when they, you know, take on Common Core and they only have 15% because they have their mm -hmm. native uh, language that they do, they have their dance, they have their other, mm -hmm. you know. That's traditions. a very good question. And to tell you the truth, this, you know, this, is, this is the second state I've spoken in that had reservations. Um, and and I, I don't know. I hadn't thought of that. That's a very good the question. The reason why I'm asking is because, you know, with Stasi coming up, she's really wanting to um, visit, you know, within mm -hmm. the reservation. And um, I'm telling you, it's really hard. So if those of you who have connections, I need them. <laughs> and, and, it, and it's hard. And, and so I guess, that, you know, I've been mean, looking. There's, there's not a lot on the Internet of, mm -hmm. you know, um, Corinne about the only one that did an uh, article uh, on um, the Native American, but there's not a lot of talking points or, mm -hmm. or anything. That is, that, I'll have to think about that. I'll have to explore that. Yes, okay. yes, ma'am. Yeah, uh, you, in blue. Uh -huh. Our private school system is going to adopt Common Core, and they have one of the principals in our school system on the radio yesterday trying to plug in and answering I heard about that, yeah. It was this the Catholic school? Yeah. Uh, did they say they're going to adapt, not adopt, and they're going to infuse it with capital with Catholic principles? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't hear the interview, but I've heard the talking points. Yeah. There is a document that was put together um, by primarily a professor at Notre Dame named Jerry Bradley. And um, it was signed by 130 Catholic intellectuals, people who teach in well, colleges. They about that. Oh, did they talk they about said, that? They concluded it said they were all naive, even yeah. though they're great. Yeah. They're what, what we've heard is well, but these people aren't educators. Uh, really? They teach in colleges and they're not educators? Well, and they're authors and they're, I mean, they're. Yeah, they, they poo poo. And, and what, what we see happening with that document is that that document was sent to all the bishops. Right. And so then the bishops. Uh, because it has to do with education, handed over to their school superintendents. And um, what the letter says is, you're not being well served by your school superintendents. So they give it to the school superintendents to evaluate. So that's what's happening. The, the educrats in the Catholic system are making the decisions. And, Yeah, well, 
I mean, he's, he's not going to change his mind based on what you say. I think what's going to change minds is when people start pulling their kids out of Catholic schools. Because why are you going to pay that much money to have a public school education with a crucifix on the wall? I mean, seriously? That, you're not going to do that. And what you can do, and this is a huge undertaking, but I'm just saying this because this is very um, inspiring to me. There were parents in your very situation in Ohio who were in a Catholic school and um, they did not like this Common Core thing and they talked about it, they were educated about it, they, what the mom is an attorney, the, um, the uh, dad is a college professor, and um, they talked until they were blue in the face and they finally said, we're starting our own school. We're starting our classic school, a classical school. And that's what they're doing in Marietta, Ohio. It's called Veritas, Veritas Academy. And have, they had something like 250 people sign up immediately. That's what's going to happen. People, the people who really understand this are going to take their kids out of Catholic school and put them into a non-archdiocese school. They're going to start their own if there isn't one in the area. But that's, I think, the only thing that's going to work is get your kids out. Good luck. I mean, I, I would say try to get a meeting with the bishop. I've been trying to get a meeting with the bishop in Atlanta for a year. I haven't gotten it yet. I would have to do it by phone. I'd be happy to, certainly. I'm happy to talk to anyone, but yeah, yes, ma'am. Um, just kind of a follow-up, like, um, it's not a Catholic school, but the, Christian, the private Christian school in Williston has voted against adopting this Common Core, uh -huh. and they are seeking accreditation elsewhere. So uh -huh. there are means that you can do their research against. So if yes. anybody wanted to contact them in their private school and go in together and research That's good. That's what they're going to have to do. That's, that's an excellent point. That, yes? And I just have one, one comment I'd like to make. People are asking, what can we do? Well, as I mentioned earlier, I was in the 90s OB2 ward. And what I did, and a few of us did, is we went to the state legislature. And there's a good one. Many of you live in the middle. We have a unique opportunity because we live here in Sagamon County. And to um, give you some encouragement, I mean, we've met with some legislators since we've been here, and um, you've got a better core of people here than in any other state I've seen. Usually, you're going to find two, maybe three people who are really interested in it and, and really willing to do it. Here, you've got a whole lot of people who are really interested. So uh, you don't need a whole lot more people to get it done, I think. And work on your governor. Work on the governor. He needs to understand this is huge. This is a huge issue. Yes. yes. The yeah, oh, I, I think this is why Leah is standing there telling me to shut up. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you 